Lately, we've been taking a look at a bunch of different ways to create growth style effects. So I figured we'd take a look at how we can create this VDB advected growth inside of Houdini. So this file will be available on Patreon. If you wanna grab it, you can go through the setup, basically node for node on how I created the intro animation. So if you want that, grab that on Patreon. But let's go ahead and dive in to how we can set this up. So let's drop a geometry node in. We're gonna dive in and then we need to create some geometry to start with. So let's just make a sphere, set this to polygon and then up the frequency. I'm also going to just scale this up a little bit. Something like that should be good. And then drop in a mountain node as well. And I'm gonna change the offset here and just increase the amplitude. Get something that I think I might like. We'll maybe try this. You can always change it later if we want. And then we'll drop in a match size just to recenter this along the origin. And then, I, like I said, we're going to be creating a VDB advected growth. So we need to make this a VDB. So we'll do VDB from polygons and drop the voxel size down to something like 0.02. We can increase that or decrease that later if we want more or less detail. But in order for this to work, we need to create a vector field to use for the advection. And first, before we do that, we will need to create a bounding region where this vector field will be contained. And we can do this with a bound node. So we'll wire in our match size here. Go ahead and template that. And you can see that it is just slightly larger than our object. And we want to add some padding to this to give the object some room to grow. So we'll up this to like two. And then we want to create our vector field. So there's a few nodes that we will need for this. Starting off, we'll need a volume node. And in this volume node, let's go ahead, just view it and untemplate this. In this volume node, we want to set this to a vector and then name it Vel for velocity. And then I'm going to change the uniform sampling to by size and the properties from the border type. I'm going to set this to repeat just so that the, uh, the volume or the velocity field will kind of repeat along the edges. And then from here, we need to actually create some velocity. So we'll do a volume VOP. And we want to be able to see what we're doing. So let's go ahead and drop in a node that will allow us to visualize what's going on, which is the labs vector field export node. And we'll wire this in and then we'll check this visualize. Otherwise it'll just show us the volume, which is not what we necessarily want. Let's go ahead and take a look at that and dive on in. So in here, we don't actually need this node so we'll just delete that and we want to drop a bind export because we want to export our our noise to our velocity vector so we'll name this vel and then we can use whatever noise we want with some little caveats here which i'll show you here in a second let's drop in a curl noise and wire in the position and our noise into our velocity field and this gives us our velocity and our visualization. Now I said you can use whatever noise you want, which is pretty true, except for one little caveat, which if I set this to sparse convolution, we can take a look at what that is. So from certain angles, you can see that this, all of this velocity is kind of moving in the same direction, the same general direction, which essentially means that you'll kind of get this movement of our advection all in one general direction, which you may or may not want, which I don't want in this case. So I'm just going to use a noise that doesn't, uh, doesn't have that. So there are a few noises that do alligators one simplex is not as far as convolution is just kind of tick through them and take a look and you can see which ones do and which ones don't. I'm just going to start with a Perlin noise here and I'm going to change some of these settings. I'm going to just up the frequency just a little bit. We don't want to make it too chaotic. Maybe 1.2. I'll drop the roughness down a little bit because like I said, I don't want it to be too chaotic. 
Uh, and then I'm going to just drop this attenuation down as well. Just change things up a little bit. Maybe something like that will be good. Now I also want to just promote this offset so that we can animate this because it won't allow you to animate the offset inside here. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll do $FF divided by 100. It should give us a nice slow movement, which will just add to the effect a little bit. So in here, we need to be able to use this velocity field inside of our VDB. In order to do that, we need to actually make it a VDB. So we'll do a VDB convert. And like I said, convert it to a VDB. And then we are all set to drop in our SOP solver, which will do all of the work of the advection. So wire in our geometry into the first input and then our velocity field into the second. And let's just jump back to frame one and take a look at what we got going on here. So we have our VDB now, and by default with advection, let's go ahead and drop in that advection node. So VDB advect, it's going to need a vector field in order to work. And the way that we can get a vector field is by using the gradient and we're going to mix that gradient with the vector velocity vector field that we already created. So we'll do a VDB analysis and we'll wire in our previous frame into our analysis. And let's go ahead and just wire this into our vec so we can take a look at what it does. So if I press play here, you can see that it's just kind of going to bloat our mesh. And you can sort of think of the gradient of the SDF like a normal of your object. Uh, it's not exactly what it is, but it's the best visual representation that I can think of. So just kind of think of it as a normal and it's going to just push your object outward. Now we don't want that because that's not very interesting. Obviously it just looks bloated and just blobby. So we want to add in our vector field. And the way that we can do that is using a volume fop. So we'll wire our first input into the, the gradient and then our second input will be the vector field that we created now i do want to rename this gradient just to make sure that it is set up exactly how i want so we'll call it gradient and then i'm going to dive into our volume vop and once again we don't need this volume vop output but we do need a bind export we're just going to re-export this out as the gradient and from here, we also want to bring in our gradient. So we'll do a bind import and make sure before you start typing in the name here, you set this to a vector because sometimes it will bug out and not read properly. So we'll call this gradient. And then we want to normalize these values. So basically make them between zero and one, just in case they exceed that. Let's move this out of the way. And then we want to bring in the velocity field that we already created. So we'll do a volume sample file and we'll use our second input as the file name and our position into the position. And again, we'll just normalize this. So alt drag and wire this on up. And then you can use all sorts of different math nodes to combine these, but I'm going to use a multiply. You'll get different effects with the different math nodes. And then we'll wire this into our export. And you can see that our volume has changed a little bit. And if I go ahead and click play now, you can see that we're getting some sort of an effect going on here. And it looks like, again, it's just not working properly. Let's try and re-import that bind. Again, let's set this to vector and name it gradient and hopefully this will work like we want yes so for some reason i don't know why it doesn't work um just kind of reads it as a, a float and doesn't work properly but this is what it should be looking like it shouldn't be moving all in one direction like that unless of course you have your noise set to one of those other noises let's just take a look one of these other noises that are a more 
are kind of moving in that one direction, like I said before. So kind of moving in this direction. So it should be, if we click play on our solver, should kind of move in one direction. Which it's kind of hard to tell on this, but it is kind of moving in one direction. Let's go ahead and just set this back to Perlin. And you are getting an interesting advection growth going on now. So that is kind of the basics of this. Now we wanted to add in a little bit more variation to this. So the way we can do that is by just adding a second vector field. So I'm just going to duplicate both of these nodes and wire them up. And then our volume VOP here, let's go ahead and change this to uh, simplex. And then I'm gonna drop this down to like 0.2 for all these. And then our roughness, and maybe up this a little bit, uh, change this attenuation back up somewhere like that. Maybe add a little bit more turbulence in here. Let's see what this looks like with our vector field. And this will be kind of a bigger, a bigger growth, whereas this is kind of noisier and smaller. This will be more of a larger growth. So let's wire this into our third input. Let's jump back in here. Let's go back to our volume VOP. And we need to, whoops, we need to wire in our third input into our third input of our volume VOP. And then we want to just copy these nodes. So we'll set our op input three into our file name. Whoops, our op input three into file name. And then we want to put these together. I'm gonna use an add node this time. And that'll kind of move things in one general direction, sort of like what we had going on before when it was messing up. But that should give us a different look to our animation here. And it's kind of kind of getting sort of similar to what we had before, just a little bit more blobbier. So you may want to play around with the different settings. Um, you may want to let's maybe let's maybe try multiplying these and see what that gives us. Oops. Multiply this into our gradient and Looks like it's kind of bugging out. We may need to reset our simulation. Looks like it's not liking that for some reason. I guess we'll just scratch that, but let's go ahead, wire this back in and move on to the next part. So I'm gonna bring in our animation that we had from the from the intro. So I'll just drop in a file node just to bring this in to demonstrate the next part so I don't have to cache anything out. So if I take a look at this animation here, you can see that it goes long and then after 45 frames, that's all I've cached out. And this moves pretty quick. If I go ahead and click play, you can see this is moving pretty quick. And obviously we want this to maybe last a little bit longer. And the reason I exported this out to a VDB is because we still want to do things with it. So you don't want to convert this to polygons quite yet. We want to actually convert it out or cache it out as a VDB so that we can retime the animation. So I'm going to set the speed to something like 0.25. And then in this volumes, I'm going to set the blend mode to by voxel position. And now if I take a look at this, click play, you can see it's moving a lot slower and it's now blending between the frames pretty well. Even though we only have 45 frames, it's actually moving pretty well and not giving us really bad artifacts that you may get otherwise. But the one thing that we do have that we wanna correct, it's maybe a little bit hard to see, but there is some little striations going on in our geometry here. So we can just use a VDB smooth to smooth this out and that should get rid of most of that. From there, we can just use a VDB convert and convert this to polygons and we should be all good. Just give us a quick play again. And you can see that we got this nice growth going on. 
just like we want. So if you wanna affect the growth differently, you really wanna dial in these noises and these two volume vops right here that'll kind of dial in the look of your simulation. But that is kind of the gist of how you can go about setting up this sort of effect inside Houdini. So like I said, the project files will be available on Patreon if you wanna grab those, by all means do so. There's also some other stuff up on there and some other stuff coming. So make sure to keep an eye on Patreon for all of that. Uh, the, like I said, the project file will be available. I probably won't save this tutorial part, but you can get the intro animation along with the materials that are on this object to show how I went through that. You can grab those on Patreon if you're interested. So anyways, hopefully this helped you out. You learned something. Uh, check out my other videos if you're interested in more, learning more about Houdini. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.